Hello, Yakri here with another Dominions 4 video. Um, this one is going to be a little more of an advanced video. Uh, I want to talk about the various magic schools in the game and what some of the uh, sort of milestone spells in them are for uh, a nation that doesn't have actual like uh, national spells in a particular school. Uh, I think I actually picked Niflheim and they do have some national spells. You can see that they're lit up in blue. We're not going to really talk about any of those. Um, Although I don't think... No, Draugr are kind of good, but yeah, they're not, they're not going to be super relevant to this. So we're going to talk about Conjuration first, uh, which is nice because there's not too much to talk about in Conjuration. So I'm going to assume you already know a little bit about the Dominion's magic system in the game in general, because uh, this is supposed to be a little bit more of an advanced video, and jump right into it. Um, the first two levels of Conjuration don't have very much worth mentioning. Probably the only thing I would really talk about is the storm power and water power, uh, and water power is, I believe, only available underwater. Yeah. So, water power, very rarely, if ever, relevant. Storm power is, however, um, if you can cast storm, and you can only cast storm power during a storm, but if you, if you have, if you have the ability to cast storm, it's a good milestone for you. But level two is so fast to get, it's almost irrelevant. Now level three of Conjuration is where we start seeing some useful stuff. So level three, we have the summon elemental spells, and, uh, this is one of the spells in Conjuration that's actually pretty directly useful at various levels of Conjuration. Summoning an elemental in combat, especially, I believe, um, water or earth elementals, uh, fire elementals too, because they're uh, fire aura. I think air elementals are the least useful, probably. Uh, but summoning an elemental is a good way to uh, get some power down on the battlefield, especially these uh, elemental summon spells that can be cast with only one in an elemental path, right? It requires a gem, but it, it can be a good way to get some early combat power out of the Conjuration School if you need to go to, through Conjuration for some other reason. Uh, so, Conjuration is not um, normally a combat school of magic. Uh, it's usually used out of combat to summon creatures, and even then, uh, most players consider the majority of summon spells and conjuration to not be very good. Um, however, summoning elementals in combat is one exception to that. It's not something you do all the time because the gem cost is kind of high for the amount of power you gain, but if you really need a little extra oomph in a battle, it can be a good choice. And at level 3, you also get summon earth power, which is definitely the best summon you know, strength, extra strength ability, because uh, summon earth power adds an additional... Path, earth path right for casting but it also gives you reinvigoration three uh, and reinvigoration is very good if you don't know it's reduces your fatigue every turn uh, and it can offset the fatigue cost of casting quite a bit in addition to the fact that of course it makes your magic pads higher which also will offset the fatigue cost of casting reduce it rather by uh, one half per uh, tier higher than the spell level your casting ability is. So it's very, very, very good. Um, Phoenix Power, similar thing for Fire, but like most of the, or all the other um, summon powers, it does not give you any other special abilities. It just increases your magic path. The only other one that's different is Strength of Gaia. Let's see if I can find that. Yeah, Strength of Gaia, I believe, gives you <laughs> regeneration, increased strength, bark skin? Yeah, oh, there, it has the actual extra effects. Strength, bark skin, and regeneration, as well as a bonus to nature magic, which is really good. Not many spellcasters can just cast that, but it's a kind of a great um, sort of carry ability. Uh, uh, carry. Oh, sorry, wrong wrong game terminology. Uh, thug ability, right? Like for Pangea, Pan Pangea can cast that, and they can get um, they can get units that can cast that and summon earth power and have bark skin, increased strength, regeneration, as well as reinvigoration out of two spells, and much higher magic paths for casting anything else if they want to cast more spells, but you can also just wade into combat with that quite effectively. Um, although if you have that much access to earth magic, you probably would like to throw on like iron skin as well, uh, as it's a much larger bonus than just bark skin. Huh. 
So up to Conjuration 4 is where most nations want to go, or a little bit lower. Conjuration 3 or 4, generally. Because 4 is where you get Light of the Northern Star, it's where you get Strength of Gaia, and this, so it's sort of like the last couple things most nations would want to bother getting. Um, I don't think... I guess Awakened Vine Ogres could be pretty good, potentially. Um, but most of the other stuff in here is not considered very powerful. It's pretty much just the boost, magic path boosting spells and the elemental summoning spells. However, on some nations you will go farther. Uh, either because you want to break into a specific magic path. Uh, maybe you have a pretender that can summon some of the bigger creatures in here. That, like fairy, fairy Queens. Fairy Queens Court, I think is what it's called. Um, so let's look at those. Because that's pretty much the only reason to go past Conjuration 4. Um, I can't remember if Conjuration has some globals. If it does, we'll get to that, and that would be pretty useful. Um, there are also more powerful summon elemental spells for middle of combat, which can be useful in certain situations. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Conjuration 5 is pretty lackluster. Voice of... Oh, yeah. Voice of Tiamat. This is the water spell, so this is one of the reasons to go higher. If you're a water nation, an underwater water nation, um, that has... Uh, I mean, they all have access to water mages, so I don't know why I put that as a proviso. Um, this will search friendly targets for all elemental sites at nine which is very 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 good and can get you a lot of extra gem income so that's that's pretty valuable to push for uh, most of the uh odd like nine site searching smells are a little hit and miss and often only good in the early age or if you like really want to invest in long term like increase the amount of gems you get from that school but voice of tiamat because it searches for uh fire air water earth and uh is that everything Am I forgetting it? Yeah, I think that's everything. Um, Earth Sites, uh, it gives you a lot of benefit, potentially. Um, let's see. Mm, trolls, trolls, trolls. Contact Trolls. I think that's not the one you want. I think you have to get higher than that. Yeah, Trolls are quite good, but what you, how you really want to get Trolls is through the Troll King's Court. Right. Only Earth 3, it gives you a Troll King... Yes, he's a powerful, yeah, Troll Kings are powerful. Earth Mages, it's one way to step up your magic pathing in Earth. If you only have access to Earth 3 with Earth Boots, you can summon a Troll King. And I believe Troll Kings have base Earth 3, so you slap Earth Boots on them, get Earth 4. It might be a little, it might be Earth 4 instead of Earth 3, but I think they're Earth 3. Um, and uh, th it, there's a lot of good spells, actually, in Conjuration 6, right? Conjuration 5 not super great. Conjuration 4, only good for specific nations. However, Conjuration 6 has Flame Spirit, which is a powerful fire mage, uh, which is actually a pretty good expenditure of your fire gems. Fire gems have a very limited number of good uses, and Flame Spirit is one of them. Uh, the Sea King's Court. Um, sea King is a powerful water mage, so if you need to step up your water ability, um, he's a good option. The Sea Trolls are good. They're not as good as regular trolls, but I mean, they can go into the water, so if you want to conquer some water provinces as a land nation that has access to water magic that he's a good option uh troll king's court we already covered quite good and i think ah contact lamia 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 queen lamia queen i believe has death magic right should say in here same time however she'll remember forever dead sorceress of great power yeah i believe she has access to death magic um Look her up in the Dom Inspector to see if you only want to cast that spell. But Lamia Queen is one of the spells that's considered quite good. Um, it's very gem efficient for how good Lamia Queen is. Uh, it does use nature gems, which is one of the more valuable gem types. But even so, it can be worth casting. Um, especially because I believe she has death 3. And so if you if you have, like, you know, nature death, and you have access to the... Well, what you have to have, but you only have death 2, she can be a good choice. Or, if in general, you just don't have a lot of access to death mages, but you have one, uh, she can be a good choice. Moving up to 7 and 8. This is something you're not going to get to in most games, because 
Well, there's just not a lot of reasons to go this high in uh, Conjuration, unless you're going to 8 for the Elemental Kings and Queens. So you can go to 8 for the Elemental Kings and Queens, I've done that before, but you know, it's kind of one of those things where often you're going to make it to 8 or 9 in one Magic School, and you're usually not going to pick Conjuration. However, I've had some games go very late where I'll have 8 in uh, 3 or 4 schools, in that case, Conjuration happens fairly often. Some nations have their own special uh, national spells that are quite good as well, and that can get you a lot of benefit. If you have a nation, especially with a lot of different magic, ba excuse me, magic paths, um, especially different elemental paths, you can get a lot of benefit out of this because you could summon um, elemental king of fire. If you can summon like an elemental king of fire, an elemental queen of air, and some queens of water, and maybe like. Uh, cast fairy court that can get you a huge amount of benefit uh the elemental kings and queens are very powerful uh mages they're really good thugs uh air queens especially are very good thugs water queens of water are a little less great unless you can actually or actually have a reason to go underwater if you do though they're quite good the kings of earth are awesome because big earth mages are fantastic and they're big earth mages the king of bane fires is amazing although very few nations are going to be able to cast that well of Misery is a fantastic global that gives you death gems and gives everyone increased uh, revenue. Um, giving, giving everyone a bonus uh, is a little bit less than ideal sometimes, but it also means that people are going to be less like less less uh, interested in murdering you to get rid of the global. Whereas if you cast some blood global or something, people are going to be you know after your head on a pike. Uh, well, of Miseries can be kind of a benefit to everyone, just more of a benefit to you, so people are less likely to want to go after your ass. Um, you might have noticed that I included 7 and 8 together and then just didn't talk about 7. That's because there's few things here to care about. Uh, I think Mound Fiends are pretty good. Uh, I could be wrong about that. Powerful Death Mage. Yeah, Mound Fiends are quite good. Um, Wild Hunt. Not bad, really. Uh, who am I kidding? It is pretty bad. I think the issue with Wild Hunt, as I recall, but, uh, as long as Lord... Yeah, the Wild Hunt Lord can get killed by an enemy mage who's thugged out. And uh, then it's useless, so I would probably probably never ever cast that. Um, <laughs> taking back what I said about it potentially being quite good. Yeah, no. No, I was thinking of something else. Well, there's there's not a lot going on here. It's it's just kind of like, ah, oh, Mount Fiends are alright. Um, the end. Whereas in eight, there's just a pile of good spells. Let's like let's look, look let's look up let's go one by one and see how many of these are actually quite good. Um, King of Fire, very good. Kindly ones, not that good. Queen of Air, very good. Queen of Water, very good. Guardians of the Deep, uh, mm, not very good. Uh, Earth Attack, actually, it's this is actually pretty scary, but it's kind of specific. So like 50-50, good spell, but it's a niche where if enemy mages are going to be easily killed by that, enemy commanders are going to be easily killed by that, it's fantastic. Otherwise, not useful. Uh, King of Earth, very good. Uh, Eater of the Dead, what was that? Oh, yeah. Eater of the Dead is obnoxious, but not something I've seen used like to good effect very often. Uh, King of Bane Fires, very good. Uh, oh, terrible. Uh, manifestation, just not very good. Well of Misery, very, very good. Wild Growth, that's... Oh, hmm. Not very good. The range is too short. Um, but it could be nice to have your Nature Mages get access to that. The Fairy Court, very powerful. Um, let's see. The Court of Spirits. Sprites? Sprites. Uh, I'm not sure how good the Sprites are, but the Fairy Queen is fantastic. Like... Uh, really good nature and air magic. She has healer, so she can heal um, afflictions, which is very good for you if you have like a good, powerful pretender, or if you have a lot of thugs, especially. Um, and her magic paddling is great, and she flies, I believe, which is fantastic. Um, now, if I recall correctly, ah, yes, this is the Ancient Presence. This is kind of a similar description to the Eater of the Dead, but uh, the Ancient Presence is actually pretty frickin' scary. Um, I had uh, I had a game where, who was it, Citis, um managed to... Citis, 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 uh, managed to 
summon a few of these. Uh, I don't know why he summoned as many as he did, but they actually just shreked through my army when I was playing Middle Age Agartha. And uh, since they increase in hit points, the more stuff they eat, they can actually grow into the thousands of hit point range. Um, <laughs> and they become nigh on unstoppable. A lot of things that could kill other units are not going to kill them. Um, I only was able to win because I had that this stupid artifact helm that auto charms things. And eventually I took control of his uh, horrible abominations that had thousands of hit points and they fought each other. And... Uh, I think they didn't all die. He actually won out because I didn't take control of enough of them because they have really high magic resistance, but eventually more of his army died, and I won. <laughs> it was kind of a funny fight. It, was, it didn't really lead to uh, the the resolution of that game, but still. Uh, level 9 in general is not really worth it other than Tartarian Gate, probably. Ancient Presence is kind of decent. Um, but it's a little niche. If they don't get off the ground and start eating a ton of things, they can actually die pretty easily early on. They cost a lot of water gems. Their pathing is really specific. Tartarians are kind of in a similar situation where you need to have Gift of Health up and you need all this other shit. Um, this Gift of Health heals them. They're still kind of crazy, though. And you also need to be able to cast Tartarian Gate. Uh, uh, well, that's right. You have to also cast... Um, I forget what it's called, but that nature spell that makes regular units commanders and then they're, then Tartarian Gate's quite good uh but if you don't have all that shit in place for this like super high level spell then it's not very good at all Enchanted Forest if I recall correctly yeah Enchanted Forest is actually pretty darn good um so it's a spread it's a Dominion spread and then attacks people I think it's not as good as it used to be with the changes to Dominion but it's still a powerful spell so that pretty much cover, covers it. You know, for most nations, you're going to go to three, and you're never going to care about Conjuration again uh, until very end game, and even then, maybe not. For some nations, you have a good reason to go to four. For what? Wa underwater nations only, there's a great reason to go to five. And uh, after that, it's all for the actual benefits of Conjuration. Like six and up is where you start to really see cool things come out of Conjuration, like Troll King's Court. Uh, City King's Court, Lamia Queen, eventually Fairy Court at 8. Um, overall, Conjuration is a priority for very, very few nations. Usually, it's only a priority because you have some very good national spells in, in Conjuration. And even then, you know, you often will take it to like 4 or 5, and then you will leave it until later in the game and move on to other magic paths. Um, to be fair, that happens a lot with a lot of magic paths, but it's... Once, once I start taking the time to cover other magic paths, I think you'll be able to show you why some magic paths are better to just r run straight to the top with than Conjuration. Um, one of the reasons was probably because Conjuration has, um, Conjuration summons you like individual units for a fairly high gem cost. And often you would rather give all of your mages that you can just recruit every turn for gold um, more powerful spells to cast and then those things also would benefit in turn anything you can eventually summon with conjuration so usually you're better off going up enchantment or alteration or evocation or something to get yourself better spells for your mages to cast rather than getting better mages or better thugs and that's all for conjuration thank you Really need a catchphrase for the end of my video.